My name's Leah Crest. Uh, this is, uh, I'm an artist in Toronto. I have created a Megillah Esther. Uh, I learned how to do soul fruit for that. And um, I was commissioned by Marcy Gilbert and Rabbi Shalom Schachter to create this Megillah. It's a kosher Megillah. It's a Hamelech. As you can see, Hamelech is at the top of every column. The first word, Hamelech. Hashem's name isn't mentioned in the Megillah. So Hamelech is seen as the um, recognition of God's hand in everything that is created. Um, the illustrations, there are 16 what are called amudim, or columns of lettering. And above and below each column is an illustration uh, relating to the text. So there are 32 illustrations in this Megillah. They are based on 14th century and 15th century Persian manuscript art based on the Persian manuscripts of the, uh, of the royalty. And all of the costumes are based on costumes of that period. But what I've done is I've put in personal details relating to the couple who commissioned it, as well as subtext from the uh, Megillah itself. So here, we see Ahasuerus feasting with his um, the nobles in his court. Here, Queen Vashti turns her back on the attendants when they come and ask her to dance for King Ahasuerus and his guests. And here she is at her party with her maidens, but she turns her back on the attendants. Ahasuerus is talking to his attendants to decide what he's going to do. He decides, and they say, suggest to him that they have the, all the young women in the country, in Shushan, in Persia, come and audition to be a new wife. So the young women come, and they are in training for a year. You can see them learning one of the dances in the court. Here is Mordechai talking to Esther. She's wearing a high necklace. At the top, there are Magen Davids in the lattice work, um, wine for Kiddush, Shabbos candlesticks, wine cups, sforim on the in the bookcase, and Mordechai is wearing a robe that's reminiscent of the talis. Here we see that he has chosen. Esther to be his queen. And her uncle, Mordechai, is walking by the courtyard and he hears the two, um, two of the people, Bigtan and Teresh, plotting against the king and reports that to the court. And here I've taken Rabbi Shalom Shachter and his brother Joseph to model Bigtan and Teresh because when they were children, they used to dress up as Bigtan and Teresh for pouring. Um, here, we see Haman for the first time. Green is the color of uh, purity and religion and spirituality in Eastern religion, but in our culture, it's seen as jealousy and envy, and that describes Haman. So I have him dressed in the western color of green. Mordechai refuses to bow down. Haman gets very angry and decides he's going to destroy the Jews because he can't stand that there's a people who will not bow down to him. He goes to King Ahasuerus, pays him, and has an edict here to say that he wants to kill the Jews in Ahasuerus who's always very suggestible, agrees to this. Okay, here are the horsemen sending declarations, taking declarations across the empire. And it says in the text that they send them in whatever language they speak in that part of the empire. Mordechai hears it. He puts on sackcloth and walks in front of the court. Now, Esther is inside the court. She can't leave her home. We see her looking over. She has seen her uncle Mordechai and sends an attendant out with clothing for him to change into. So we see that white and black fabric that is what he generally wears 
in my pictures. And Mordechai refuses to put on the nice clothing, but he has the declaration and sends the attendant with the declaration to Esther. We see Esther bowing over in um, sorrow to read what has been written in the declaration. And this is where we get that phrase in the Megillah, which is written so beautifully, where Mordechai says, you have to do something. If you don't do it, somebody else will. But people have to stand up for the Jews. You must stand up. So she decides what she's going to do. She fasts for three days, and she goes and talks to um, Ahasuerus. She puts out a scepter to see Esther. Now, look at the sleeves. They're long. They cover their hands. And that is how the clothing was done at that time in Persia. The wealthy had long sleeves because they didn't have to use their hands. And here we see Esther wearing that clothing. Haman, and what her idea is, she will invite Haman and Ahasuerus to a private dinner. Haman walks down the street and talks to his wife, Zeresh. Now, Zeresh is also wearing long sleeves because she's wealthy and she doesn't have to use her hands. She's a very arrogant woman and she's wearing yellow, which is seen again in our culture as a sickly culture, reflecting her sickly personality. That night, Ahasuerus cannot sleep. He sends his uh, attendant to read to him from the Book of Memories to help him go to sleep, and that's where Mordechai's name appears. Now, what I did here is I put the moon and stars into Ahasuerus's pajamas, just as a bit of fun. And we see Haman standing in the doorway waiting to talk to Ahasuerus. Now, we all remember at this point in the story, Ahasuerus sees Haman and says, what shall I do to honor the man top of the kingdom? Haman thinks it's him, and he says, dress the man in the king's garments, put him on the king's horse, and take him through the streets, calling out, this is the man who uh, the king prefers. So to Mordechai's sorrow, to Haman's sorrow, he finds out he has to lead his arch enemy, Mordechai, through the streets. Here we see the first feast where Esther is hosting Ahasuerus and Haman. So this is the first feast, and Haman is very happy. And here, uh, Esther is at the second feast. She invites Ahasuerus and Haman again to a feast. We can see Haman, she is now begging Ahasuerus and says, there is a man who wants to destroy my people. And Ahasuerus very now, right now is very in love with Esther. And he says, Who is this man and what is he? And she says, it is him, it is Haman. And Haman is shocked. We see the anger in Ahasuerus' face. Haman throws himself, she goes off, sits in her, on her pillows. Haman throws himself to on her, begging for mercy. Ahasuerus turns around and thinks Haman is violating his queen. So he sends him off. Here, Ahasuerus appoints Mordechai to be the ruler, the vizier next in power to him. And here is Queen Esther. They're being awarded power. Now this is a map of the empire of Shushan. It says twice in the Megillah that Ahasuerus ruled 127 provinces from Kush to Hodu, from Ethiopia to India. And this is actually the based on a map of Xerxes I's empire, which relates exactly to Ahasuerus's empire and often his, uh, Xerxes is related to Ahasuerus. Here we see Esther and Mordechai walking through the court. Mordechai is wearing a, the rainbow talus, which is modeled after the talus designed by Rabbi Shalom Schachter's father, Rabbi Zalman Schachter Shalomi. 
and so it has all of the colors of the rainbow. Here, Jews are celebrating in a pagoda, in a garden outside, and we can see that they're making Havdalah because in this particular um, column, it says, La Yehudim Haita Ora Simcha Vesason Um, which is a phrase that is used in Havdalah. To the Jews, there would be or light and happiness and joy. Um, and I'm trying to find that particular phrase. And where is it? I will have to find it. I'm trying to find it. There it is. The Sasan Vikar. Lahudim Haita. A phrase that's used in Havdalah. So here, this gentleman is holding mint um, for the besamim, for the spices. He's holding the Havdalah candle. He's holding the wine. And here's the wine bottle. So they're doing Havdalah in their celebration. In the next column, we have Haman's ten sons who are hung. Now, when I was thinking about it, I wanted to relate the evil of Haman to the evil that has been inflicted on Jews throughout history. And because the story of Haman and the Jews having to rise up to protect themselves has happened over and over and over again throughout history. Here is Paro, Balak, Amalek, Nebuchadnezzar, Titus, Philip I of France, Isabella of Spain, Chamonetsky of Poland, Hitler of Germany, and Achmanadijad of Iran. And I put Achmanadijad because although there are many anti-Semites, unfortunately, in the world, he is one who comes out and publicly calls for the destruction of Jews and Israel. So once again, horsemen are sent out to say that Jews are allowed to protect themselves and fight for their lives and their freedom. And here they are sending out declarations. Here are people, again, as Jews throughout the years have always done, feasting and having a good time once things are a little bit settled, and here we see the tagine, the kind of for the Middle Eastern food that was eaten. It says that the Jews were to give gifts um, to the poor and to their friends. So here, this is the Gilbert Schachter family giving Mishloach Manot to the poor. These are their two sons, and here is Marcy Gilbert and Shalom Schachter. And here again, delivering messages to the people of Persia. This is where it says that we should tell our children throughout the generations this story. And in this picture, we see Marcy's mother, who died just before Purim. Um, her name was Esther. And this is the grandson. Uh, you can see these two red-headed young men, and here is the grandson, so we see different ages, all the generations. In the last panel, I have Marcy and Shalom as Esther in Esther's clothing, and Mordechai in Mordechai's clothing, and me, Leia Prest, writing the Megillah, because it says that Esther had the Megillah written.